Hello class, good morning. Today we are going to be discussing about intermediate metabolism. What do we expect to understand under intermediate metabolism? The first thing we are going to learn about is carbohydrates. Because when that intermediate met metabolism, we are talking to talk about different classes of macromolecules. We have carbohydrates, we have lipids, and we have amino acids. Those are the major macromolecules. We still have nucleic acids, but we'll be discussing that under a different subject. But today, let's concentrate on the following macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, and amino acids. Then we now go to NHSs, which talk about formation of ATP, that is adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy currency of a cell. To kick that, what do we expect to learn on that intermediate metabolism? Carbohydrates. We're going to talk about digestion of carbohydrates, glycolysis, and fate of pyruvate in different organisms. We're going to learn about tricarboxylic acid circle. Carbohydrate acid circle is also called the Krebs circle. The PPP, which is called the pentose phosphate pathway, the gluconeogenesis and glycolysis. Regulation of carbohydrate metabolism and disease of carbohydrate metabolism. Then the next topic we are going to move on is lipids. On the lipids, we are going to talk about digestion of triacylglycerols, the different lipids that we have that is saturated and unsaturated acid, the phase of glycerols, beta oxidation of fatty acids, phase of ketone bodies, synthesis of fatty acid triacylglycerol and regulation of metabolism. Then under amino acids, we are going to talk about digestion of proteins, transamination, deamination, and decarboxylation of amino acids, urea circle, metabolism of specific amino acids like lysine, isoleucine, tryptophan, and aspartic acid. We are going to discuss about inborn error of amino acid metabolism, regulation of metabolism. Then under energetics, we are going to look at free energy and biochemical reactions, metabolic reaction and ATP, hydrolysis of ATP, ADP and phosphorylation products. Then finally, we are going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation. So kickstart, we want to talk about introduction to carbohydrates. We remember that when we did our introduction to carbohydrates, carbohydrates were extensively introduced that we have different classes of carbohydrates. We have the simple carbohydrates and we have the complex carbohydrates. The simple carbohydrate is made up of monosaccharides. And monosaccharides, as you all know, is from three carbon sugars to seven carbon sugars. So let us concentrate on the six carbon sugar because we're going to talk about more of that in metabolism. Glucose, fructose, galactose are examples of six carbon monosaccharides. And we know that monosaccharides we can have what we call, we have different classes of monosaccharides. The first one, we have the aldos, <coughs> the aldose sugar. We also have what we call the keto sugar. The keto sugar. You remember this during your introduction to biochemistry? Aldo sugar and keto sugar. Glucose. Glucose, as I said earlier, is a six carbon sugar. Glucose is a six carbon sugar. So what happens to glucose? We call glucose, we call glucose and aldo exos sugar. And aldo exos sugar. Why do we call glucose and aldo exos sugar? Because a glucose is a six carbon sugar and it is an aldo sugar because it has an aldehyde functional group. We are going to discuss extensively about glucose and its metabolism. Then disaccharides, we have different classes of disaccharides. We have what we call um, maltose. maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide. It contains two glucose units. If you remember that we say that maltose Maltose as a sugar contains glucose plus glucose. Then sucrose. Sucrose is another sugar 
it contains it contains glucose plus fructose remember that fructose is a, is a keto sugar then we have lactose lactose is milk sugar it contains of glucose and galactose and galactose now basically we have this combination of disaccharides now in its metabolism we are going to talk about the digestion where does the digestion of all these disaccharides take place and what is actually the end product is our concern in this part of the course then we have complex sugars we have starch that is the storage form of glucose in plants we have glycogen the storage form of glucose in animals we have fibers we can see cellulose in plants too so basically we're going to discuss all these in digestion of carbohydrates now let's look at digestion of carbohydrates digestion of carbohydrates starts from the mouth we have an enzyme that we call it a salivary amylase. Some enzymatic digestion of starch occurs in the mouth due to the action of the enzyme salivary amylase. This enzyme starts to break the long glucose chain of, of starch into shorter chains, some as small as maltose. So the other carbohydrates that does not undergo enzymatic digestion in this mouth goes to another part of the digestive system to digest. So in a nutshell, dietary carbohydrates are being acted upon by salivary alpha amylase in the mouth before it proceeds. It contains polysaccharides, the strain, sucrose, lactose, and maltose. That is what actually acts up on the mouth. Now, after the mouth, in our saliva, in our, in our um, digestive tract, that is our alimentary canal, the next thing is the stomach. The stomach. Now, remember that the stomach has a low pH. We have a low pH in the stomach. That pH will inactivate salivary amylase. So it will no longer work once it arrives at the stomach. Although, there is more mechanical digestion in the stomach, but there is a little chemical digestion of carbohydrates in the stomach because the alpha alpha and the salivary alpha amylase is being deactivated in the stomach due to the low pH of the stomach wall. Remember, the stomach is acidic and it is going to have a low pH. Now, moving forward to the small intestine, to the small intestine. The small intestine consists of another enzyme we call the pancreatic alpha amylase. The pancreatic alpha amylase. Most carbohydrate digestion occurs in the small intestine because of the pancreatic amylase. The pancreatic amylase is secreted from the pancreas into the small intestine. The pancreatic amylase is secreted from the pancreas into the small intestine. And like the salivary amylase, it breaks down small oligosaccharides. When we say oligosaccharides, remember that when we have dietary carbohydrates from the mouth, it will have broken down to oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides is about three to 10 glucose molecules. Are you with me? It's more, it's more than a disaccharide. A disaccharide just have two monosaccharide units. But a, an oligosaccharide have three to ten monosaccharide units. So when the oligosaccharide enters into the pancreas, into the small intestine, the pancreatic alpha amylase will will break the they it will break it down to small oligosaccharides and maltose and maltose. Now what now happens after that? The rest of the work of carbohydrate digestion is done by enzymes produced by the heterocyte. That is the cell lining of the small intestine. So this enzyme will break down the maltase. 
maltose form from starch digestion, lactose from um, let's say from cheese, sucrose from um, sauce. It will break it down by different enzymes. If it is maltose, maltose will be acted by maltase. Maltose will be acted by maltase to give you glucose and glucose, which I've explained earlier. Then, if it's the food that contains a lactose, it will be digested by lactase, which will form glucose and galactose. Then, if it is a um, sucrose, sucrose is digested by sucrase which will um, form glucose and fructose. So, we recall that um, if a person is lactose intolerant, they don't make enough lactase enzyme. They don't make enough lactase enzyme to digest lactose adequately. So lactose passes to the large intestine. We note that. That if someone is lactose intolerant, intolerant, they don't have enough lactic enzyme to digest lactose adequately. So lactose passes to the large intestine. So by the end of enzymatic digestion of carbohydrates, you are going to be left with three monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, and galactose. These can now be absorbed across the enterocyte of the small intestine and into the bloodstream and transported to the liver. So digestion and absorption of carbohydrates in the small intestine are, is, is carried out to get to, so that we can absorb the basic monosaccharide in the liver. We are going to learn more about this as we, as we talk about the, how, what happens to the unit that comes out of digestion of carbohydrates. Glucose. Glucose digestion happens um, in the cytosol, the cytoplasm of the cell. Now what happens in the cytoplasm? We have a process called glycolysis. In our next class, we are going to talk about what happens in glycolysis, what is the role of enzymes, exokinase, phosphoglucoisomerase, phosphofructokinase. We are going to talk about ATP ADP formation, what led to we having NAD formation, what is the fate of pyruvate in an aerobic condition and also in an anaerobic condition. We are going to discuss basically all that in our next class. Thank you.